Hey everybody, welcome to Women, Culture, and Society in uh, Winter Session 2015. My name is Lindsay Whitmore and I will be your instructor over the next couple of weeks. Um, I put this video together, first of all, so you could kind of put a face to the name, which always helps in um, online learning environments. And second of all, uh, so that I could clarify some of the structure issues around a hybrid class um, and also kind of the expectations for the course overall. So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about today is in the syllabus, which is posted in uh, the syllabus tab on eCollege, which is what we'll use for the online portion of the class. Um, so I don't know how many folks are familiar with eCollege or even hybrid learning at all. Um, so I'm going to keep it pretty basic to kind of um, accommodate, you know, a wide range of experiences with online learning. Um, so as I mentioned, eCollege is the course shell that we're going to be using for this winter session. Um, and that course shell is accessible by going to onlinelearning.rutgers.edu. And along the top of the page, there are a bunch of drop-down tabs. There's one that says class login. And so in order to access all the materials for the class, you're going to go to that website, onlinelearning.rutgers.edu, class login, and then there's a tab that says login to Pearson Learning Studio. And in parentheses, it says eCollege. And that's what you're going to want. So click on login, it'll bring you to another screen. The first option is login with your Rutgers Net ID, and this brings you to the central authentication um, page where you know we get into all of our Rutgers related uh, web apps. And just look for Winter 2015 eCompanion. Um, click that, and you should see 0198801 colon zero two women culture and society um, I, I've been told that you should have access to the course shell by tomorrow at 6 a.m. and so if folks don't have access by tomorrow at 6 a.m. Uh, just send me an email and let me know uh, so that we can get all of those issues worked out as soon as possible um, and so if you click on the link to our course shell it'll bring you up to the kind of main um, architecture of where our class is going to be taking place, at least for the beginning portion of the class. All of the readings that you'll need throughout the semester are all, throughout the winter session, are all located on eCollege. Um, the difference is that for online sessions, you'll be posting assignments, responding to other uh, students' posts through eCollege, uh, whereas for in-class sessions, You'll go to eCollege to get the readings for the class and then come to class and, you know, we'll have conversations that way. Um, so just a brief kind of overview of what eCollege looks like. You have your syllabus tab underneath the course home tab. That's where you'll find the syllabus. There's a, a forum to post any general questions that you might have. Um, I check this pretty regularly, uh, but you can also always just email me with questions. Um, it's just another place to kind of post concerns or challenges, uh, whatever's going on. Um, under that, you have Women's and Gender Studies Research Guide, which takes you to specific research guides for Women's and Gender Studies created by the Women's and Gender Studies Librarian at Douglas. Um, and then the next tab is Ask a Librarian, which brings you right to the Douglas Librarian, um, whoever's on call at the particular moment. So that's more sort of research-oriented resources. Underneath that, we've got um, Introduction 1223. So that's the tab you're going to want to visit for our very first class tomorrow. And after that, Weeks 1, 2, and 3. Um, and the weeks here are a little bit crazy. Um, the first week is actually sort of all of the classes that we have up until... Um, one, two, January 2nd. So I've lumped together like these days on and off that we have at the beginning um, all into the first week. Second week, uh, one five to one nine, that's when we actually begin our Tuesday and Thursday um, in-class sessions. And week three, you know, that's our final wrap-up week. So we really have a lot to kind of pack in in a short amount of time. Um, so hybrid format, I've sent an email out already with a, a little bit of clarification on this, but we're meeting tomorrow in an online session. 
1223. We have the 24th and the 25th off, so no responsibilities for you all then. Um, we start back up 1226. That is a Friday. Um, and so we have online session Friday, 1226. We've got an online session Monday, 1229. Tuesday, 1230. Wednesday, 1231. Thursday, the 1st, we have no class. Friday, January 2nd, we have an online session. Monday, the 5th, we have another online session. Tuesday, the 6th, is our first in-class session, 1 to 4 p.m. in Scott Hall. Um, and then, you know, we sort of fall into a bit more of a regular schedule then. So Tuesdays and Thursdays are in class. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday are online. And that begins um, on Monday, January 5th. <laughs> There's a handy chart that I made in the syllabus that actually outlines exactly what days we have class and what days we don't have class and where, where they're happening. So definitely check that out. Um, hybrid means you know, that there is a hybrid of online and in-class sessions. So we will make the best of what we have. Um, if you need to get in touch with me, my email is right there up on the syllabus. It's lindsay.whitmore at rutgers.edu. And, you know, always feel free to be in touch. I'll try to get back to you, you know, as soon as I can. Um, especially timely because this is a, you know, such a sort of condensed class. Um, and you can reach me by sending me an email directly or by sending one through the eCollege shell. Office hours for me, if you want to come and see me in person, um, will be on Tuesdays from 12 to 1 at the Rutgers Student Center. Um, so this will be the two Tuesdays that we have in class sessions, um, which is the 6th and the 13th. <laughs> so those are my two office hour days. And you can feel free to drop in and chat with me if you have any concerns. Um, Next, the course description. Um, I'll go through this quickly. So this hybrid course is going to introduce you to the interdisciplinary field of women's and gender studies. We will be working critically, collaboratively, and with a feminist lens to think about how formations of gender, sex, and sexuality have been constructed and contested, challenged through time, especially in relation to things like race, class, ethnicity, ability, age, and nation. So our focus is gender, sex, and sexuality, but I'm interested in thinking about how those three issues, gender, sex, and sexuality, um, are in conversation with things like race, class, ethnicity, ability, etc. Um, in my own teaching, I tend to focus on categories of knowledge, power, oppression, and difference. And so those are themes that are going to be coming up again and again um, in our readings and in our conversations and in the prompts that you all will be addressing during our online sessions. Um, and, you know, I try to sort of bring in a mix of theory and kind of popular culture, popular conversations. So, you know, we'll be using quite a bit of um, social media, pop culture, um, and also kind of wider you know, national and more local conversations about things like violence and community and identity. So if you've never taken a women's and gender studies class, um, you know, it may feel a little strange to be talking about things like community or violence. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that we can unpack together how those things are sort of intertwined uh, within our own understandings of sex and sexuality. So, that's a quick overview of some of the things that we'll be doing. Um, I've also listed a bunch of core questions that you can take a look at um, on your own time to kind of get a sense of where I'm coming from and, and what concerns and interests I have as we embark on this class together. Um, the class satisfies the SIS 21st Century Challenge Learning Goal, um, and there's also on the syllabus um, the three areas which this class will sort of more directly address. The only course uh, readings that you're going to need for the class are all available on eCollege, so you're not going to need to purchase anything in addition. Um, 
going back to the eCollege course shell, if you click on, for instance, week one, um, you'll see a reading schedule pop up. And that's everything that we have going on for that week. If you click on the page for an individual week, so I'm mean, sorry, an individual day, so take uh, Friday, December 26th, for example, you'll see a page pop up with links to all of the readings for that day. You'll also see the assignments that you're going to need to do for that day, and then a quick sort of overview um, that I've made and posted for you all. So all of the assigned readings and other multimedia materials are available, you know, on the individual pages for each class session. So you'll go there to find exactly what you need to read, um, exactly what you need to do, and also some more sort of uh, supplementary material in that overview. Um, the overview is not an outline of the reading, but it's something that I put together to kind of contextualize what we're talking about a little bit. Um, so reading those overviews is also required um, in addition to whatever texts are linked to um, on the section that says today's materials. So these are sort of like lectures, I guess, um, but they're kind of in reading format and I've designed them to be a little bit more interactive as well. So you'll find links to Tumblrs, to Twitter feeds, to different websites, um, you know, Wikipedia definitions, you know, whatever sort of helps us to understand what's going on in the reading today. So those overviews are also required um, and viewing any material that's linked within them so, you know, don't just sort of read through it. Um, click on the stuff that's clickable and see what that's all about. Because, you know, I think it'll sort of enrich the stuff that we're reading together. So course readings, multimedia overviews, that's the stuff that you're responsible for engaging with every class session, regardless of whether it's online or in the classroom. Um, so there's a, a big kind of chunk of the syllabus that outlines the days and times that we're meeting. I've already talked about that a good deal. So if you want to refer to the chart um, more specifically about when we're meeting in class and when we're meeting online, feel free to do that. Um, online sessions, as I said, accessible through the eCollege course shell. There's a link to that in the syllabus as well. Use your NetID to log in and find our class. Um, support for eCollege, if you're having issues, is accessible all day, every day, all night, all day, by calling the hotline, helpline, sorry. Um, and the number for the helpline is listed on the syllabus. Um, or you can email help at ecollege.rutgers.edu. And I provided that info because as your instructor, you know, I'm responsible for all of the content-related questions that you might have about the class, but I'm, I'm not a technical expert on eCollege, um, and so those are the folks that you're going to need to get in touch with to answer, like, you know, I can't, um, whatever, something's not working. <laughs> um, call them, email them, they're awesome and always available. So for the online sessions, um, we don't need to be logged into the course shell at any particular time to meet as a group. So there's no live or kind of simultaneous component of the class. For each online session, you're responsible for reading and completing assignments on eCollege by 5 p.m. on the day of that particular class session. So that means completing any readings that are listed under today's materials, um, engaging with any videos that I send or websites or podcasts. Um, also visiting the assignment section of the online sessions individual page and completing any assignments that are listed there. Most of our online sessions will happen um, in the threaded discussion forum that's located at the end of each week on the sidebar. Um, so you'll, you'll typically be reading a prompt that I post for that day session, you know, engaging with the readings, crafting your reply, and posting it by 5 p.m. the same day. Then you are also required to post a comment to at least two other students' discussion replies. Um, and I'll give you a, a bit more info on that a little bit later. 
alternatively, <coughs> excuse me, we might also have other web-based assignments for online sessions. So it's not necessarily going to be the same discussion forum situation every day. So just make sure to check the assignment section um, to make sure that you're either supposed to post to the forum or do something else. Um, so online sessions are reading, assignment section, and then throughout the course, there's also um, a Tumblr component. So we'll be using Tumblr to sort of think about how the issues that we're talking about in class are you know, existing on the internet already in all sorts of forms. So you're responsible for making two posts to our course's shared Tumblr um, throughout the course of these. I'm sorry, two posts a week for each of the three weeks, so a total of six uh, Tumblr posts. Um, in terms of how I hope that we're going to be together online, um, there is a, a section here for online engagement and kind of the expectations that I have for you all um, around that. So I'm hoping that our sessions will be an opportunity to kind of engage in ways that we can then pick up and expand upon in the classroom. Uh, one of the great things about a hybrid format is that it allows us to kind of have this relationship established ahead of time where we kind of know each other, we know um, you know, how we are thinking and absorbing the readings. Um, and then we meet each other and it's like a whole new kind of relationship forms, you know, when we're actually face to face. So I like that. And I like to sort of use that in productive ways um, to really kind of enrich the class. So, you know, making that transition from online to in class can sometimes feel a little weird. Um, because they're very different kinds of, of doing a class. But I'm hoping that we can be sort of um, authentic and also committed in our online presence so that um, the, the transition to the in-class experience is pretty smooth. Um, in terms of, of being in an online class, I understand that there's also that tendency to feel like perhaps there's a little less accountability because you're not face to face, you're not seeing me, you're not seeing your other fellow students. Um, but the participation and presence in the online sessions are really important. Um, they are 40% of your grade, your total grade for the class um, comes from an assessment of your attendance and your participation. So that really, you know, is kind of reflected in the amount of effort that you're putting in to crafting your responses on the forums, to commenting on other students' responses, um, you know, and that kind of will be reflected in your final grade. So, you know, if you have any concerns about any of these issues, if you've never done an online class before, you know, just be in touch and, um, and we can you know, chat and, and try to address any concerns that you have. Um, for in-class sessions, Tuesdays and Thursdays after January 6th, you do not need to log on to eCollege to do any of your assignments. Um, instead, you'll log on, see what that reading is for that class, and come to class having read the material or watched the video or, you know, do whatever's listed, essentially. So the class basically in terms of grading is uh, chopped up into three major components. 40% of your class grade, your final grade is attendance and participation. 40% is your online portfolio, which includes the discussion responses on eCollege, comments on other students' responses, any other online assignments, and Tumblr. So those are all kind of, um, you know, wrapped together in this portfolio, and that's 40% of your grade. And the final project is 20%. So 40 for attendance and participation, 40 for online portfolio, and 20 for your final project. Um, I give a bit more context in terms of what I'm looking for when I'm assessing your online assignment. So I'd like you all to, to take kind of a, a deeper look at that. Um, discussion responses and online assignments I grade out of a total of six points. So you get four points for the actual posting, the response that you post, and another two possible points for each of the required comments. Um, 
Tumblr posts are basically a sort of pass fail. So if you do it, you get a hundred. If you don't do it, you get a zero. Um, and there's also a rubric there for kind of how I'm assessing, you know, what's an excellent response, what's an adequate response. Um, some more in-depth info about what I'm expecting in terms of attendance and participation. Uh, so attendance is mandatory. Coming to class more than 20 minutes late is considered an absence during our in-class sessions. Um, not posting your response or comment to the discussion forum by 5 p.m. during days that we have online sessions is considered an absence. Um, however, I understand that our lives are complex, so everybody gets one unexcused absence over the course of this three-week winter session period. Um, and you can take that unexcused absence either for an in-class session or an online session. So if you don't come to an in-class session, that's an absence. If you don't post anything by 5 p.m. for an online session, that's considered an absence. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, attendance and participation is 40% of your grades. So every unexcused absence after the first one will drop your final grade to the next lowest level. So an A minus becomes a B plus, a B plus becomes a B, et cetera. Um, and if extreme circumstances are coming up for you all over the course of our time together, please let me know. We can work together to figure something out. Um, participation is, you know, also a super important part of this class. I really like to design this as a class where we're exchanging, we're having dialogue, and, and we're bringing our own experiences and opinions to the table. So active participation is a pretty big part of making that work. Um, and I've listed a bunch of different ways that participation can happen. Um, it's not always just about talking as much as possible in class or posting, you know, the lengthiest responses. Um, it's about engaging in small group discussions, asking questions, providing opinions or experience, and coming to office hours. Um, it doesn't really mean taking up as much space as possible. Uh, rather, I think it means being conscious of the space that you're taking up um, and engaging with the comments and responses that your classmates are making as well. Um, three times throughout the winter session, I'm going to provide an unannounced reading quiz, which will also be uh, a graded as part of your attendance and participation grade. Um, and these are basically unannounced so that um, I can make sure you're doing the reading. <laughs> the questions are definitely content based and, and you know and they're fairly easy. So if you do the readings, watch the films, you know, look at the assignments, um, you'll be able to do fine. So that's attendance and participation. Online portfolio, as I mentioned, um, is you know basically the bulk of the work that you're going to be doing in online sessions. So for each class, you're required to either uh, you know do a, an alternative assignment that I'm posted or that I've posted or most often respond to the discussion prompt that I post. Um, and I will provide these by 9 a.m. on the day of the class. In terms of length, um, there's no sort of, uh, well, there is a, a word cutoff. Um, so in order to get credit, you've got to post at least 250 words. Um, 300 to 700 words is probably a good target in terms of crafting something that is thorough enough, um, but also not necessarily too lengthy. Um, and the comments on other students' responses uh, do not have a length requirement. But it's a pretty interesting and important opportunity to kind of interact with your classmates. And so you want to make sure that it's, it's really more than, you know, one sentence or something. Um, the Tumblr is, um, you know, the other piece of the online sessions, online portfolio. Um, and the, the stuff about the Tumblr is all kind of included in depth on the syllabus. Um, so you'll have to register for a Tumblr account if you don't already have one, which you can do really easily by just going to tumblr.com. Um, if you do have a Tumblr account, I, I would typically ask people to create a new account, which, you know, we can all, like when this class is happening in a full semester format, it, it does make sense to have directly to the Tumblr. This, at this point, because we're together only for three weeks, 
I'm asking you to submit things to the Tumblr through an email address, which is specific to our class Tumblr. So that email address is located on the syllabus, um, and there's also a link underneath that that talks about um, how to submit photos, images, websites. Um, you know, I'm really interested in, in you kind of tapping into the networks and, you know, social media channels that you're already engaged with to try to um, give some more context to what we are reading in class that week, for example. So images, pictures, uh, creative writing, um, a poem, um, links to articles, anything that relates to the class essentially um, is, is what I, you know, I want to make this a kind of a less pressure-y way to engage some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about this semester. So lots of information about the Tumblr component of the class on the syllabus, um, which you can definitely take a look at and, um, you know, be in touch if you have questions about that. Um, in terms of a lateness policy, so turning in assignments on time is your responsibility. Uh, the discussion threads will remain open for 24 hours after that 5 p.m. deadline. If you submit an assignment during that time, you can receive half credit, um, but it's really your responsibility to kind of make sure that you're able to post um, by that 5 p.m. deadline. The third component of the class is a final project which is actually way more flexible than um, a typical, you know, final paper or something like that. Um, you're required to submit a final project that engages with your experiences in the class um, over the winter session. So I'm very open to creative projects, projects that are sort of based in your own, you know, areas of interest or expertise. So you could write a research paper, you know, that's a sort of four to five page, um, more traditional kind of paper project. You could do an artistic or creative writing project or, you know, compose a political manifesto, make a short film. Um, there are lots of options and, and we can definitely talk about this more when I'm um, meeting you in class for the first time. But it's something to start thinking about. Um, you know, early because we actually don't have a lot of time. <laughs> Three weeks flies. Um, and I'm asking you to provide a one paragraph description of your final project um, due to me by email on Thursday, January 8th. The last uh, day of class, the last in-class session, third, the Thursday, January 15th, will be when our final projects are due. Um, in terms of classroom environment, I would love for you to take a look at, um, you know, kind of my expectations around respect and openness. Um, you know, we touch upon a lot of sensitive and, and often intense issues in this class. And so, you know, I'm asking you to kind of be very respectful of what that means for people. Um, technology policy, basically no cell phones or laptops or tablets or iPads in class. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in integrating technology into the classroom, but because so much of our class is online and because technology is essentially driving, you know, most of our class time together, I really want our in-class session to be about um, engaging face-to-face. So if I see folks using a cell phone or, or a laptop when we have class together, um, you know, I'll just, I'll make note of that and uh, your participation grade will, you know, reflect that. I'm not, I'm not so into class, but just know that, like, I can see what's going on. Um, in terms of communication, I'm expecting you to definitely, uh, you know, complete assignments on time and to stay on top of any course announcements. I'm going to be in touch with you via email quite a bit. Um, you know, sometimes the syllabus might change or updates might, you know, be necessary. And so, you know, please definitely stay on top of communication while we are in this class together. Um, academic integrity and plagiarism is another important issue that I've sort of outlined my policy on the syllabus. Um, basically, 
you're agreeing to abide by the plagiarism rules that are outlined by Rutgers. Um, and I provide a link to the policy there. If you're unsure about issues around plagiarism, please let me know. Um, it's, it's far more productive for you to email me and be like, I'm not sure if this is plagiarism. Uh, then for you to submit something for me to find out, which I inevitably always do, um, and then fail you for the course. So keep that in mind as you're crafting your responses, your final projects, all of that stuff. Um, also, if you have any kind of um, disability support services needs that require any accommodations, um, I'd love you for you to please contact both the Disability Support Services Office and me. Um, and we can get this process going sooner rather than later. It would be great. Um, the next chunk on the syllabus is our classwork and reading schedule. So I'm not really going to go so in depth in all of our readings. Um, I'll just briefly mention the sort of three core units that the class is, is organized around. Four units, sorry, four units. Um, the first couple of classes, we're going to be kind of getting oriented to what feminism means to you, what it means to me, what it means to the wider kind of cultural conversation um, that's happening right now as we speak. So feminist orientations is that first week. And we'll also talk, you know, quite a bit about privilege, about feminist history, um, and about feminist futures. So, you know, in one class we'll read Sojourner Truth, and the next class we'll talk about hashtag activism and Gamergate. Um, that's just a brief kind of example. The next chunk of classes is really about challenging and rethinking the assumptions that we bring to our daily lives. So I've called this knowledge, power, and the body. Um, and you can see the sort of selection of readings that I have there. We'll talk about nature versus culture, we'll talk about trans lives, we'll talk about how we know what we know, um, which is a big question, but I, it's one of my favorite class sessions. That's our first online session, so um, more on that later. The third unit is race, sexuality, and representation. So thinking about how our bodies are positioned in relation to media and advertising. Um, and the final unit is, is a big one. Um, I've kind of bundled a lot of themes into this, uh, this last unit, and it's called violence, precarity, and community. So we'll talk about everything from rape culture to policing to immigration to prison writing. Um, you know, it's a, it's a sort of meaty, um, final unit that, um, I think we'll really bring together a lot of the different theories and sort of practical approaches to issues that we've developed at the beginning of the semester. So there you have it. I think that's a pretty, um, you know, uh, in-depth enough, but also um, kind of gloss of what's going on for all of us in this class session together. Um, I will follow this video up with an email, um, giving you some more kind of details about how we're going to get started tomorrow. But as always, please don't hesitate to be in touch, and um, I'm really looking forward to getting to know you all. Thank you. Take care.